Good morning and welcome to the Morning Scoop for Monday, January 3rd. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The Notre Dame game is in 243 days, the game against Michigan in 328 days. It was an eventful weekend for the Ohio State football program. They won the Rose Bowl, of course. You may have heard something about that. They landed a commitment on Sunday from Amari Abor, a four-star defensive lineman for 2022. And then on Saturday during that Rose Bowl game, they also landed a commitment from four-star safety Cedric Hawkins out of Florida. He is a 2023 prospect. We're going to have Mark Givler, uh, our Buckeyes group recruiting analyst, on to talk about both of those guys on tomorrow's show. We have travel. He has travel. So we're uh, we're kind of juggling a couple things right now, but he will be at, on tomorrow's show. But when I don't have, uh, I can't have on the person I want to have on. Who else do I have on? Buckeye scoops Tony Gerdeman. Tony Gerdeman, thank you for joining me. It's an honor. It's a privilege. It's a requirement. It is in your contract. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot to talk about about this Ohio State program right now. But I guess the most interesting thing, or maybe the thing that we're getting the most questions about when we do live shows or when we're on the board or whatever, is the coaching staff. There's already, there's already you know, one change that's sort of afoot. Jim, Jim Knowles came in. First day was on Sunday. Matt Barnes. We know Alex Gutman reported Matt Barnes is, is out. He's going to be headed to be the defensive coordinator at Memphis. But you get the sense that that's probably not the end of the road for the, for the changes that are coming this season. Yeah, especially when you look at the specialties of both of those guys. Jim Knowles, obviously your defensive coordinator, has a background with linebackers. Matt Barnes has a background. Well, his, his coaching duties at Ohio State have been in the secondary this entire time. So you would still want to fill that role. And again, how much are you going to want to give Jim Knowles as the defensive coordinator? We've seen some guys get – Greg Madison was a co-defensive coordinator, had no position, then asked to have the Sams and the Bullets back when he was at Ohio State. Jeff Halfley had some of the, in the secondary, but also had help with Matt Barnes. So it's not something that they – like I don't know exactly if Jim Knowles will have – any one position, that's something we will eventually get to ask about now that Ryan Day can fully acknowledge that Jim Knowles does exist as Ohio State's defensive coordinator. And, you know, that that happened right at the end of the Rose Bowl. That was, you know, the Rose Bowl ends, the clock strikes midnight, and Jim Knowles is officially an employee of Ohio State University. At the end of that Rose Bowl, though, there was something else that happened on the field at the at the Rose Bowl. And you know, this is this is one of those things where people, you know, wonder, do you, you really need to be at the game? Do you get every once in a while? It's like, oh, that's a really interesting thing that just happened. I think we just learned a lot from a seemingly minor thing on the field. Let people know what that was. Yeah, I was told that Kerry Combs was getting his photos, taken, getting pictures taken with some assistant coaches, Tony Alfred and with Mickey Marotti. And the sense was that this was uh, a, a keepsake, something that uh, you want to memorialize because it may be the last time all of these guys will be together with the, um, from what I was told, it, it just, it felt like this was more of a Combs thing. Like this is the last time I'm going to be part of this Ohio state staff. And I, I have no information in terms of th- this is definitive or anything like that. This is just reading into a situation when there is all kinds of stuff going on. This is where, uh, Players, coaches, people let their guard down a little bit and are a little bit uh, don't really care what people see because they're happy. They're it's it's an emotional time. And what I was told is, you know, he just wanted to get some pictures with some guys that um, you know just because it, it's sounds like it's going to be the last time. Yeah, and and that would not be a total surprise. I think to your point earlier, very likely more changes will be happening. So that, you know, we'll, I, I suspect that we will probably hear more officially in the next day to three days. People, we did a live show on Sunday night. Lots of people were saying, well, I thought Jim Knowles was taking over on January 2nd. Why didn't he do a press conference? Why, why have they not done a big thing about it? On January 2nd, the uh, Buckeyes got back to Columbus probably sometime around four or five, six in the morning because they left uh, from L.A. and went home that night. But they probably didn't get home to the wee hours of Sunday, uh, Sunday morning. And uh, probably did not feel like jumping off an airplane and going straight to the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. And even if they had, most of the people that cover the team were still out in Los Angeles. So that wouldn't have done a whole heck of a lot of good to have a press conference then. So I'm guessing we'll at least 
hear some more further news leaking out in the next day, two, three days as as those changes, whatever changes they end up uh, coming, do end up happening. You know, that trip, that Rose Bowl trip, and we are still out in California, which is why we're sitting in the same room and it looks like it's decorated like a hotel room and not one of our houses. Uh, it is, it was a really remarkable trip in a lot of ways. There was, it was sort of the end of one era, you know, it felt like the, the end, you know, it's the end of a year and, and you have that sort of end of the year, last day of school kind of feel a little bit where it's like, oh, we're not going to see some of these people anymore. And it's also, you got a little look ahead at the future and then the future looked pretty intriguing, I would guess, to most Ohio State fans. What was to you the most memorable day, moment of the trip or of, of the game itself? Yeah, I think the most memorable moment of the trip is the game. Mm -hmm. And for me, the most memorable moment of the game, probably somewhere in the the second quarter when I realized that we were watching something crazy, something that you don't get a lot of chances to witness, let alone be present at, to be part of, and to be in the same building as. And so I think that was... For me, and, and I don't know which Jackson Smith and Jigba touchdown it was. I'm sure it was one of them, but just where you realize this isn't normal. I'm not at a normal game. I am not at the Ohio State Washington Rose Bowl. I am not at the Ohio State USC Cotton Bowl. This is so much more beyond that. I'm at something that four years from now, 20 years from now, we'll be talking about. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, I was at that game. I covered that game. I was down on the field for this play and for that. And it was, uh, it's still crazy. And you guys, you kids today, you don't even understand. Yeah, it was, that was a game where the game itself, how often has Ohio State been involved in a game where the losing team scored 40 points? I can't off the top of my head. I mean, the 2013 Michigan game, maybe, but that was at 42 41. So, I mean, 18 Maryland. Yeah, Maryland, that was two teams in the 50s. But I mean, you, there, there are not that many. And so that in and of itself, and then, you know, the Michigan game is the Michigan game and okay, like a Maryland game, like whatever. It's just like, oh, they might've done it against Indiana in like 2013. Didn't they have a 52 49 against Indiana? And yeah, yeah, something like that. So it has happened a few times. It does not usually happen on the stage of the Rose Bowl with literally pretty much the whole country watching, at least anyone cognizant of football is watching that game. And so there was that. But there was just the Jackson Smith and Jigbert performance was like, holy cow. This is in the last 12 months and two weeks, right? We have watched Trey Sermon break the sing- school single game rushing record. Jackson Smith and Jigba break the school single game receiving record. And uh, uh, let, let me back up for a minute. Uh, on yesterday's show, I talked about how he had this remarkable day and had 297 yards receiving. And uh found out later that uh, Stat Broadcast, which is the website that is the official stat, yada, 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 uh, was, uh, had failed to account for his, uh, the play where he fumbled, where he gained 50 yards and fumbled. So the 297 yards that was like mind-blowing to me uh, a day ago is in fact 50 yards short of the actual total of 347. You wrote something fantastic on Sunday about the, you know, like this is un- almost an unbreakable record for Jackson Smith and Jigba. But there was one exception. Yeah, the only person who could probably break this record is Jackson Smith and Jigba himself. Yeah, I said it's unbreakable, but if uh, anybody's going to do it, it's going to be him. And that, that stat broadcast thing bothered me as well because <laughs> I was the one writing all of the, the, the story about, well, he just broke David Boston's record. He just broke Terry Glenn's record. However, I was following along on stat broadcast. He broke Terry Glenn's record in the first half on that 50 yard fumble. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, you know, I didn't write it then. And then I wrote it and I tweeted it out on his, I think, very next catch in the, in the third quarter, which was maybe a 45-yarder, and tweeted it out mm-hmm. uh, unknowingly uh, that I was way off. Not, on, not, not because of my fault, but, uh, but it was. It never is. Guess. No. And, again, like the craziest thing for me is not just yesterday. And, and Tom, we didn't even mention C.J. Stroud. 573 yards school record. Is, uh, it, is that a lot? It is a lot. In mm-hmm. fact, you can only get to 347 yards receiving with a lot of re- pa- yards passing. Mm-hmm. But in Jackson Smith and Jigba's last five games, 60 catches, 
958 yards, which would be good for the 10th best season in Ohio State history. And we're talking five games. I don't think, um, I, I know we have not seen a stretch like this. Uh, J.K. Dobbins had a tremendous stretch of games to, to get to 2,000 yards. Ezekiel Elliott, the three postseason mm-hmm. games, is up there. These five games, I mean, he had two 15 catch performances, that 240, you know, mm-hmm. against Nebraska, 240. Nothing. Yeah, I mean, 15, 15 receptions, that doesn't, I mean, school record, yes, technically, but I just saw someone else do that just, just at the Rose yeah. Bowl. So how special could it be? Yeah, I guess you go back to uh, the Trey Sermon at the end of the 2020 season. He had a couple of games in a row that were real big games. But, you know, then you get to the Alabama game and he breaks his collarbone on his first or second carry of the game. And then you don't get to see, can he do this again? Can he carry them the way Ezekiel Elliott did? You are going to get to see a whole season of Jackson Smith and Jigba doing this again. And the, the two games, the 15 catch games, both of them, the, the literally the one and one A of most receptions in a single game for an Ohio State receiver. Those are two games that Garrett Wilson was not playing well. We don't officially know that Garrett Wilson is going to the NFL, but he didn't show up for the Rose Bowl. So uh, I don't think, you know, unless an Ohio State truant officer chases him down, I have a feeling he's probably headed for the NFL, which means we could see a whole season of Jackson Smith and Jigby without Garrett Wilson. And, you know, I I don't think that uh, that's, you know, no Garrett Wilson is in a good thing on the whole for the Ohio State offense, but I kind of want to see what's next. You, it's almost like a home run derby. You know, you just want to see, Sammy Sosa swinging away. You want to see Mark McGuire swinging away. You just want to see a bunch of throws go to Jackson Smith and Jigba and, and see what he can do because he can do uh, after the catch stuff. I mean, he, he, he even breaks tackles. He dragged one guy into the end zone trying to tackle him, and it felt like he was just bringing him along down the sideline. Like uh, he, he can do it all, and uh, he, he doesn't seem to get tired, and he's okay with the workload, and he's, he's a humble dude, and uh, he's a problem. Mm-hmm. for Big Ten defense coordinators for the next one year. Yeah, I think one year is about right. I talked to him about his brother, Kanan Smith and Jigba, who's a minor leaguer in the Pittsburgh Pirate system. Asked him a bunch of questions about that at uh, one of the pre, pre-game pre press conferences. And, uh, you know, Kanan Smith and Jigba was added to the 40-man roster for the Pirates. So it's like, okay, that's, if you're not a big baseball fan, it's basically, you're not on the major league roster yet, but the Pirates think you are close enough that it's like, okay, we're going to make sure no other teams can take you uh, you know, take you in the rule five draft or any of that kind of stuff. They consider you a very serious major league prospect. So I said to Jackson, so is there like a friendly competition between you and your brother? Like who's, you know, am I going to make the NFL first or is he going to make major league first? He's like, Oh yeah. 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 We've been talking about that for a while. So it may just be one more season for Jackson Smith and Jigba if for no other reason than to beat his brother at something, which if you have a brother, you probably mm-hmm. understand. So uh, Tony, thank you for joining me. That was uh we are going to have a whole bunch more to talk about this month. We have uh, mentioned off the top, we'll be talking to Mark on tomorrow's show about the recruiting piece of things, two commitments over the weekend, plus Mark is down at the All-American game, where there will undoubtedly be more recruiting news for Ohio State coming out and then uh, signing day coming up in February. We are expecting some more coaching news to come out at some point this week, probably. You're going to have probably some transfer portal news one direction or the other. Guys have to make NFL decisions. This is going to be a busy, busy month, and it's technically the offseason. It's starting to feel like there might not be an offseason anymore in college football, and as someone who hosts a daily podcast, it's not the worst thing in the world. So that'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.